Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to think about all of that stuff which I've worked out before and try and see what's useful in this graph that I can work off of the reciprocal. So here's the first thing. The easiest thing generally tends to be where's the vertical asymptote? You often get vertical asymptotes. Wherever this guy equals zero, wherever y equals zero, you get a vertical asymptote. So I can see one immediately there. I don't actually know what its y value is, sorry, what its x value is, but it doesn't matter. I don't need to know its exact value to know that it's going to be there, because that's where the intercept is. Okay? Um, in addition to that, I notice most people skip this step, but I'm going to encourage you to do it. Um, in addition to that, I'm going to shade. Now over here, my reciprocal function, I'm very confident will be up in this area. How did I know that? What information did I use to work out that my reciprocal will eventually go through here? Think? The original function is positive in this area. So therefore my reciprocal will also be positive. Okay? Uh, by the same token, I've got the same guy over here. So there, the original function is negative. And the reciprocal is also negative. Now one of the things you will frequently, not every single time as you'll notice for the next one, but one of the things you'll frequently notice is you get a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. Now my question to you is how did I know that there was going to be a horizontal asymptote in this case? What information told me that? Why would my reciprocal be going towards zero? What's the original function doing over here on the right? The original function, what's it doing? It's just getting huge, right? Which means for the reciprocal, the denominator is getting huge. And that makes the whole thing actually very small. Okay? So over here, the original has large positive values. That means the reciprocal will have small positive values. Look over on the left. Over there, the original will have large negative values. So the reciprocal will be small negative values. But still negative. You can see I shaded it, right? The last important points I want are where y equals 1. And I can actually see three spots where that happens. Did you notice them as well? There's a y equals 1, there's another one, and there's another one. Okay? And now I'm pretty much ready to go. Now I feel comfortable, but you may feel like, no, I want a few more values, right? For example, some nice spots would be these guys. Oops, that's not marked correctly. I'm going to mark this in a different color. See these two here? Uh, what do we call these guys again? What are they called? These are um, stationary points, right? Now, the reason why these stationary points are interesting to me is because if the original has a stationary point, think about this. Look, here's, the, um, here's uh, an original which had a stationary point, right? What did you notice about the reciprocal? It also has a stationary point in the same spot, right? So when you have a look at these guys, see how there's stationary points here? I'm going to predict there are going to be stationary points in the reciprocal as well. And you can check out the values, right? Uh, that looks to me, that looks like uh, three, this is what I started with, I think. This is three fifths, I think. You guys told me the reciprocal of three fifths is five thirds. So five thirds is one and two thirds? One and two thirds. I'm going to place that about there. See that? One and two thirds, think it's too high? Maybe a bit lower? No, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. About 0.6666, right? Um, and then over here, what's that value over there? That's 1.4. 1 1.4. So that's, um, what's that? 7 over 5. So the reciprocal is 5 over 7, which I'm going to place around there. Okay? And so you can see, do you see how it's like, oh, it's weaving around. You're getting those stationary points I was predicting. All right, I think I'm ready to go. Oh, wait, no, one last point. I missed the point. Did anyone notice? One last point you all should have put on. The negative one. Thank you very much. So down there, down there you can see on the left hand side, there's negative one right there. Okay, I'm ready to go. Let's do the left hand side. It's going to be easiest. There's the left hand side. Okay, this right hand side's a bit weird, but that's okay. I can work it out. Hold on. I'm going to do that kind of shape. And then I'm going to do this kind of shape. There you go. Can you just look up and compare your graph with mine, the blue graph? What do you think? Are you in agreement? Right? So you can see, did I just get a, oh, whatever. Okay. Did you see, I've got the sign, I know where I'm going positive, I know where I go low, I know where I go high. This important thing with these red spots, right? Stationary point in the original gives you a stationary point in the reciprocal, right? 
Okay, it's the last one on reciprocals. Um, if you've already done this, call me over. I want to have a look, but the rest of you, go for it. Let's have a look at this last one together, okay? I'm going to do it just the same way I did before. Number one, does this thing have some symmetry? Yeah. It does. In fact, it doesn't just have any symmetry. It has a particular kind, has a name. What kind of symmetry is it? Starts with an E. This is even symmetry, right? You're like, yes, nailed it. Okay, so can I ask you to put your pens down and look up for a second? This is an important point. The reason why I start by thinking about symmetry is because if I have a shape that is symmetrical, I can instantly halve the amount of work I need to do. Yeah? Because like, if it's symmetrical, I just have to work out one half, and the other half does exactly the same thing. So now that I know it's symmetrical, I'm just going to focus on one half, and then I'm going to work all that out, and then I'm going to do the other side. Okay? So the next thing I'm going to do is some shading. I'm just going to focus on the right-hand side. This part here, the original function is what sign? It's positive, so the reciprocal should be positive. Now when I shade, you might notice I'm actually not going to shade forever. I'm going to stop right there because over here, right? Over here, the original function doesn't exist, yeah? So therefore, when you take the reciprocal of nothing, you get, well, you get nothing back, right? So the reciprocal is not going to exist over here because this one doesn't either, okay? Um, you guys told me there is a vertical asymptote. Where is it? It's at, be more specific, 2 is just a number, it's at, it's at x equals 2, right, because that's a straight line, yeah? So put that in, if you haven't labelled the equation of x equals 2, please, please do so, right, x equals 2. Now, in all three of the previous graphs, I got a horizontal asymptote, did you notice that? In all three of them, I got y equals 0, right? Do I get a horizontal asymptote for this guy? Now the answer is no, but the question is why? Like I got it so many times before, why don't I get a horizontal asymptote for this guy? Oh, because it continues. Hmm, because what continues, Rasen? Because it's straight down. Now this is really important. Just put everything out of your hands. I really want you to think about this, right? Because it's so easy in maths to just kind of follow a pattern but not know why it is. You can look at these three and be like, look, I get horizontal asymptotes all the time, right? Not all the time. There is a feature that all three of these original graphs have that gives you a horizontal asymptote in the reciprocal. What do you say? Yeah? It doesn't go below the x-axis. Okay, so wait, what doesn't go below the x-axis? There's no negative value. Okay, so you're saying I can't go underneath here? Yeah. Right, so it's going to stop, okay? That's kind of on the right track, but it's actually a slightly separate feature that gives us the whole... What, what do you say, Matt? Like the, like the semicircle, the arrow, it's like a direct... Hmm. These are like pointing sideways, it never touches the line. Okay, you're, you're on the right track, okay. He, think about this, right? Why is this value here? Why is it getting smaller and smaller forever? Why is the reciprocal getting smaller and smaller forever? Answer, everything about the reciprocal is from the original, right? The original is getting bigger and bigger forever, right? Have a look at the next one. Original, bigger and bigger and bigger. Reciprocal, smaller and smaller and smaller. Same deal here. Notice that? Even over here, right? Bigger and bigger and bigger negative. So that gives you smaller and smaller and smaller negative. Now have a look at our semicircle. Does it ever get bigger and bigger and bigger? The answer is no, no it doesn't. It never goes up to here. It never goes down to there. It's just kind of restricted in this little box, right? Now that other, there was one last important value you probably noticed. It's the y-intercept. What's the y-intercept on the original? Two. So the y-intercept of the reciprocal is a half. Okay? By the way, that's not just any point. What's this point here? It's got a name. And I marked it in red before. That's a stationary point. So I should expect a stationary point here. When I have a look, if you want to try a few more values. Oh, one last value. One last one that's important. One. Thank you. Where's one? There's one. Right there. What's the reciprocal of one? One. one. So I'm going to go right through there. I'm ready to draw this thing, right? Now just be careful, it's a weird shape. Uh, Serene, do you have a question? If that's, whoa, if that's two, that's one, isn't it? This is actually the particular critical important point I was telling you and Ian forgot to look for. That's where it's one. Yeah, it's on the Y axis, that's what we're looking for. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly draw it. You notice it's very flat. Like that, super flat, 
right? And then when you have a look on this side, it's the same deal. Super flat like that because of that symmetry that you guys told me about right at the beginning. Make sense? Now what's great about this is, uh, this is a semicircle reciprocal. So go to Desmos, right? And one of the things you can do in here is you can actually say, let's call this f of x. Now, what's the equation of a semicircle like? What goes over the top? It's a square root, right? Uh, having a look at this guy, what's the radius of this? The radius is 2, so in my equation, I'm going to have 2 squared, which is 4. And then I'm going to have minus what? x squared. There is my, whoops, there's my semicircle. And if you go and put into your Desmos, put 1 over f of x, right? Ready for it? Bam, there we go. Nailed it.